Hi, I'm Debbie Nelson with Nixine Publishing here in the United States. I'm a contributing editor and I'm working with Adrian Nixon, who is our editor in chief, coming to us from Yorkshire, England to do a series on graphene. So hello, Adrian. How are you today? Great, Debbie. Nice to see you again. That's nice to see you too. Mm -hmm. So for today, um, I have a question. With graphene, there are three bonds in the carbon and with diamond, there are four. So I wonder what is the difference or why? Why does it do that? That is a good point. Let me share my screen for a minute and we'll go back to one of those slides that we saw in a previous interview. Okay. So what we're talking about here, Debbie, is in diamonds, diamonds are exactly the same thing as graphene and graphene is a flat sheet and you're absolutely right. There are three bonds, one, two, three. Whereas in diamond, it's this three-dimensional scaffold and it's a bit difficult to see how many bonds there are there. So I'll just stop sharing for a minute and we'll come back and look at my molecular models, which is what made you think about the number of bonds. So the bonds are these grey things here. The, these black things are carbon atoms and the bonds are shared electrons. We'll maybe talk about what a bond is in a, another video. For the moment, it's enough to know that Every carbon here is connected to three others, well spotted. So it looks like that. That's the sort of repeating unit. Um, in diamond, it, this is that three dimensional scaffold. And you're absolutely right, Debbie. Every carbon atom is connected to one, two, three, four others. That's the repeating unit. Right. Yes, you're absolutely right. Very smart question. What happened to that other bond and is it important? Turns out the answer to that is yes, there's a lot more going on. So I'll need to dive back down and share my screen again because I can't, these models like this, particularly for graphene, they don't tell the whole story. So okay. I'll need to just sort of show you on a slide. So let's go back in to share that screen again. We're just looking at diamond and graphene, and now we'll focus on graphene. So do you recognize that car ring of carbon atoms, Debbie, with the bonds? Yes, in the graphene sheet. Great, and there are three bonds in the plane. Each carbon atom is connected to three others. Now, it turns out carbon always likes to form four bonds. And what happens is the fourth bond projects. Can you see my mouse moving around on the screen? Yes, I can. Right. So on each carbon atom, what happens is the fourth bond projects above and below the plane of the ring. So it goes up and then down and in forming like a lobe above and below. And then what happens is every single other one uh, does the same thing and the lobes merge together and they form this what's called a delocalized structure so the fourth bond is actually spread out over the the ring of carbon atoms does that make sense it's interesting and it's very different yeah it is it doesn't look like a normal bond it's very difficult to explain this with the the physical models that i've shown you which is the reason i've gone to powerpoint here a bond is formed from shared electrons and what the shared electrons are doing if you like they're uh, they're doing like um, a merry ring dance above the ring of uh, ring of carbon atoms in the in the graphene molecule but it goes more than that so you get this cloud of electrons above and below it, the above and below by the way in this sort of quantum world is the same thing um it's a little bit difficult to get your head around but just think of it as it's all one now if we look at a larger piece of the molecule you can see here now there are more of these carbon rings i've just put three here for the moment because it gets a little bit complicated can you see how the it, get, it gets further than just one ring all the rings merge together and what you end up with is this cloud of electrons which are above and below the plane of the graphene and that bond is smeared out across the whole molecule. It's called a pi orbital, represented by the letter pi. What this means is that electrons can flow freely above and below the plane of the graphene, and that bond, that fourth bond, is because it's smeared out across the whole structure, this is what makes graphene so electrically conductive, because electro electricity is just really electrons flowing. And now they're not stuck to any one atom, they can flow right across the whole molecule. So what your question has actually done has unlocked the reason that graphene is so electrically conductive. How interesting. So, and that's because graphene makes this perfect pattern across, so that when 
those carbon molecules are up above and it, then there's plenty of room for everything, for the electricity to just flow through. Yep, exactly. It's like a racetrack for electrons above and below. In fact, Andre Geim, he discovered that that, if you like, that secret layer formed by that fourth bond above and below the plane is so electrically conductive, the electrons actually go through ballistically. So it's a bit like being shot by a high velocity rifle. They just go really, really fast. And that's what makes it the world's best conductor of electricity. It's not a superconductor. That's something slightly different. There is still a little bit of resistance, but you can just imagine the electrons whizzing through this whole structure. So you can imagine if you can make perfect sheets of graphene, these will be, uh, these will conduct electricity uh, at least six times better than the best copper conductor at the moment or gold conductor, which are really, really good conductors of electricity. It's amazing stuff. Oh, that's incredible. And of course, with it being the most strong material as well, that's yes. the advantage. And that strength there is, doesn't come from that pi, pi bond that we've just been talking about. That just gives the electrical conductivity. The strength comes from these bonds here in the plane of the ring. These are called SP2 bonds. We'll probably talk about that in a future video. And they are some of the strongest. In fact, it's probably the strongest bond in the world, which is why graphene is the strongest material in the world. Yeah, so you, you figure if you've got this strong bond in the center and it's sandwiched between these layers of where electricity can flow without a problem, then uh, you, you, you can continue your transfer of energy. And yeah, and, and so you've, you, you're doing what good scientists do, which is think of a simple question and then let's follow it, see where it goes. You correctly said, you know, there are four bonds in normal carbon, but only three you can see in graphene what's going on. Look where it's taken us. That's fantastic. I, I really appreciate you explaining all of this. It really helps to understand more and more about graphene. Good. And by explaining, I'll learn more and more as well. So we'll win. Thank you so much for your time, Adrian. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Deborah.